Nicholson here, and welcome back to Coming Soon Movie News with Nicholson. This is a show where we break down all of the day's movie news and go over what it means for the production in general. If you're looking for a specific story, check the description of this video below. You can see the start times as to when they all start. But without any further ado, let's get started with today's Hot Topics. We now have our first full-length feature trailer for X-Men Apocalypse. Now, this has been a series for the longest time that the trailers have never really wowed me a lot for any of these films. Like, I remember waiting up until the final trailer for X-Men Days of Future Past. I remember none of the trailers before that, the teaser trailer or anything like that, really had hooked me for an X-Men movie. They look like good films, especially the teaser trailer for Days of Future Past, which had old Xavier and young Xavier coming on screen for the first time ever, um, on screen together. And so I thought that was a really cool shot, but you never really got a sense of the stakes. Like you never really got a sense that, that this was a global catastrophe or that this could be world ending doom or, or that the basically just that the stakes just weren't very high. And it always seemed like it was very self-contained and out of all of them. Now I know that a lot of films that come out nowadays, especially the superhero ones, it's getting a little bit fatigue wise. The fatigue is setting in only in the sense that every superhero movie that's coming out now seems to be about the end of the world. X-Men always seemed like the natural group <coughs> to deal with stuff like that. The X-Men always sounded like with the, the, the visual aspects of each individual character's powers, you could tell so many vast, huge scope and scale stories, but they, they decided to tell very intimate ones, very small scale. I mean, there could have definitely been world impending uh, uh, doom with these plans down the line, but immediately, like you look at X Men, and X Men was about changing the uh, changing some of the world leaders into mutants. It wasn't about ending the world. X Men Two, um, you know, the the ending with it had to deal with the dam, and now that was kind of world ending because you had. Stryker was trying to eliminate mutant kind and then Magneto changed that so that they were killing all of humankind. And so that was kind of world ending. Um, but they've never appeared that way. X-Men Apocalypse feels like the first movie to go full world ending. And Brian Singer and crew even discussed that when they were right around the time the Days of Future Past was coming out. They were talking about how this is going to be a disaster film. This is going to be the biggest scale movie that we've ever done. And they, they said that because now they have a villain that can actually accomplish things like that. And I'm glad to see that in the trailer, we're actually getting stuff like this because this, this movie looks big. This movie looks really big. My only complaint, and this is, I think a complaint about a lot of people and has nothing to do with the actress involved or, or, and her talent. I'm just, I'm, I'm getting a little bit sick and tired of seeing mystique put front and center. I like the character. I like her leadership. My, my only complaint about the trailer was the last shot with um, Apocalypse holding um, Mystique up w by her neck. And they, they kept on that shot. Like, it's going to be a big shot in the movie. And I, I don't know. I didn't ha I, I went, oh, that was kind of a limp ending. You know, it, was, it, it to me didn't hold resonance. That was my only complaint about the trailer. There were so many other aspects of this trailer that worked really well, especially like glimpses at scenes that we're going to be getting in the film nightcrawler versus angel before angel gets his apocalyptic wings or his, his uh, archangel wings um you know obviously we get another shot of psylocke just slicing that car in half we get a really good glimpse at the quicksilver sequence it it's when the x mansion is blowing up like that is going to be such a unique sequence to watch because he's going to be going in his speed in his sequence through explosions and through fire and debris and saving people. That's going to be such a really cool sequence to watch. Um, <coughs> sorry, I'm still getting over a, a, a pretty bad cold here. Um, you know, like it, it, the, the world ending aspect of the movie, I think is going to be a big part of what is going to separate this movie from the other X-Men films. Brian Singer has already confirmed that he's going to be returning at some point down the line to another X-Men film. He's not stepping away. He is going to be doing a 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea film. So we're not going to be getting a Brian Singer-led X-Men film next. Um, or at least in the next two years. It might be three years away. But where do they go from here? Like, it's the same question that people are asking when it comes to the MCU. Where do they go after Thanos? 
Apocalypse is, I mean, there's what? Two villains, maybe, that you could do outside of Apocalypse that are very similar to Apocalypse in the X-Men lore. Like, there's, um, oh, I can't even think of the damn name. Um, starts with an M. I thought it was, like, Xavier's clone or not his son. Was it Xavier's son? No, it wasn't Xavier's son. It might have been Xavier's son. I can't remember. There's, there's, there's one character... Uh, that I think was created because of I oh man it's been so long so, somebody in the chat remind me exactly which character I, I'm thinking of if you can even tell based on my description I think it's either Xavier's son or Xavier's clone let me know in the comment section if you can think about what I'm talking about because I, I'm having a uh, brain fart right now but there's only so many ways that they could go like you could probably count on half a hand how many ways they could go past this unless they go back to telling the more intimate stories which I mean, it might actually help separate these movies from the other comic book films if they do tell more intimate stories. I don't know. It's it. We're gonna have to wait and see what comes after Apocalypse. But this trailer to me really stood out because it 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 reminded me of the marketing campaign that they had for Days of Future Past because that last trailer that we got was awesome. Now, part of it was also because of the music that they chose. They chose like an updated version of Cashmere, which was great, but. This one decided to take a more melancholy and haunting version of a Coldplay song. So I don't know how I feel about that. I'm a big fan of Coldplay, but to me, it, it was a little bit... I don't know. It. I would have liked a different song. I know I'm kind of sounding pessimistic. I'm just... I'm sick. I'm trying to be uplifting, but I'm also trying to keep my strength because I have my Batman v Superman screening tonight, and it is going to be very late, and I'm not going to be getting home until very early in the morning. Um... So I'm trying to, to save my energy for that. Um, by the way, if, in case I didn't mention it on a couple of episodes ago, I will be having my review for Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice up uh, later tonight. So or, well, technically it will be Tuesday morning. It should be up between 1 and 2 a.m. Uh, so by early tomorrow morning, you guys should be able to, to check out that review. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section of that video below it. Um, but there was one key shot in this trailer that I feel... I don't know if they're just setting him up to be a bigger villain down the line or if this is actually leading to a Wolverine cameo. But we saw Stryker in the trailer. We knew that Stryker was going to be back in the movie. Um, but does this mean we're going to get a resolution to what happened at the end of Days of Future Past? Because, spoiler for anybody who hasn't seen Days of Future Past, but they kind of reset... Well, they, they reset the entire X-Men timeline, but they even reset what happened with, X, with Wolverine where um, uh, Mystique was impersonating Stryker when they pulled Wolverine out of the river. Does that mean that Wolverine didn't get his adamantium? Did Stryker not actually take him to be part of the Weapon X program? Like, there's so many questions to be asked. Are we going to get them in Apocalypse? Are they going to at least be hinted at in Wolverine 3, which is coming out in March uh, of next year? Like, there's a lot of questions. I, I don't know if we're going to be getting the answers in this, but having Stryker be in the trailer, I'm hoping that that at least is a confirmation that we're getting Wolverine in the movie, at least in a cameo, more so than what we got in First Class, but obviously less than what we got in Days of Future Past. So, let me know what you guys think about this trailer in the comment section below. If you haven't watched it yet, you can check the link in the description of this video, because there will be a link to the trailer in there for you. But, yeah, I mean, like the, the, the noticeable improvement of the look of Apocalypse, to me, stands out, I think, bar none above everything. <coughs> Because, I mean, you see him grow huge and be playing around with Xavier like a rag doll. You see his eyes go white. Like, we had speculated a long time ago that that was probably going to be what happens with Apocalypse. He's not going to be this, this huge hulking thing. He's going to grow massive when he uses his powers. And I think that's the right way to go. It's the right way to showcase how a creature like this could have actually lived throughout the years. I mean, we still don't know where he's been for the last four or 5,000 years. But... Um, yeah, I'm really excited. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And uh, when we do get more information about this topic, then I will definitely update you guys on here. Now we have another new trailer for the upcoming Legend of Tarzan. Now, for those of you who aren't aware, this movie is, to me at least, it's very intriguing because 
not only does it have an amazing cast, you have Christoph Waltz as the villain, you have Margot Robbie as uh, Jane, you have Alexander Skarsgård as um, uh, as Tarzan himself, you have Samuel L. Jackson, uh, Casper Crump is in the movie. For any of you who watch Legends of Tomorrow, he plays Vandal Savage. He is in the movie as well. Um, I... This trailer looks cool. Like, I don't know what, what people... Like, there's a lot of people out there who are saying it looks generic. And, you know, it, it, it's we've seen this kind of stuff before. But this looks really interesting to me. Now, the one problem I had with this trailer is it was not a cohesive trailer at all. It, it The first half of it showed you... Uh, didn't even show you Tarzan. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, he's Tarzan. And you don't really get a sense of the story because the actual storyline of this movie is set after Tarzan has already returned to civilization. He's already living in England. And he then has to go back to the jungle. We didn't get any of that from this trailer. So that, that's my complaint about this trailer. It's not actually selling the storyline of the movie very well. The visuals, on the other hand, and the action looks incredible. The special effects, for the most part, look amazing. they still got a few months left uh, for them to touch them up. But more importantly, this is directed by David Yates. David Yates is the guy who brought us Harry Potter 5, 6, 7, and 8. He's also working on Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Warner Brothers loves working with this guy. This guy knows how to tell very fantastical stories and very visual stories, but almost in... David Yates, to me... Now, this might get some controversy. David Yates, to me, visually is coming across similar to how Christopher Nolan would do something. Now, David Yates relies a little bit more on CGI than Christopher Nolan does. Nolan would rely a lot more on practical effects than what David Yates does, but their visual aesthetic is very similar. Um, I was just watching The Dark Knight again last night, and the one thing I noticed was this classical cinematography to it. Now, that was a combination between him and Wally Pfister, his his DP, but there was a very classical aspect to his shooting style. And that's something else that I've noticed from David Yates. You look at the Harry Potter movies, and, and for a lot of the setups, there is a classical nature to it. Um, and, and when you see the way that this trailer is done, it is done in a modern context, but there are classical tones to it. Um, and David Yates is a very fascinating director. He's somebody that I think everybody should be on the lookout for because every project that he's done so far has gotten better and better as they go on. You know, like, I mean, well, I mean, my personal favorite of the Harry Potter films is Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. I just think that was the most well-constructed movie out of all of them. Um, but I mean, th this to me looks fascinating. I just didn't like how it was put together. It, it, it didn't really tell you the story. It, it told you the the thematic impacts of the movie. It gave you the action beats. We're going to get one more trailer before the movie comes out. We'll probably get one around May because the movie doesn't come out I think, until July. Um, so we'll get one more trailer and that trailer will probably be about the actual storyline of the film. Why why Christoph Waltz has kidnapped Jane to try to get Tarzan to come out and why, you know, what exactly is going on? I really am liking the fact that we don't really know what is going on. The trailers really haven't sold as much. I hope that that stampede in the trailer is not a key moment in the movie because if so, that's a, a pretty big faux pas in the marketing department. But I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this movie. I just hope that there is something that visually dis, the, um, um, discerns this movie from the jungle book because there's that's one of the biggest complaints so far has been that the uh, uh legend of tarzan jungle book and pete's dragon are three movies so far this year that have similar tones to them in a sense it's all about a boy in the jungle and i'm hoping that there is something in each of these films that separates it pete's dragon i'm i'm not looking forward to quite as much but the legend of tarzan this is a story that i'm hoping can set itself apart because this is a timeless story. It is one of those movies where it's almost a question of why did they remake it? Like you look at Pride and Prejudice, it's a movie that, you know, every 10 or 15 years gets remade and you kind of wonder why they, they really can't do anything different with that story. There's nothing you can do visually that would tell it differently. Tarzan is a different story. Tarzan, you can use modern technologies to improve the visual storytelling behind this story. So I think that there is something here that we are going to be, uh, pleasantly, su pleasantly surprised by. But we're going to have to wait till July to see that. We're going to get another trailer for this movie probably in May. Um, so be on the lookout for that. But if we do get more information about this topic, then I will definitely update you guys on here. Before I get on to this next story, I just wanted to give a shout out to Chase Robinson. 
Uh, yes, Chase Robinson, who was our 350th subscriber to the channel. So I just wanted to say thank you. And the fact that we've reached 350 subscribers on a show that I put no money into the marketing or anything like this is just word of mouth of you guys. So thank you very much for spreading the videos, sharing them, uh, supporting them, commenting on them. Thank you very much. I know that I've been asking you guys to put a lot of comments in the comment section. I'll be getting to those uh, in future videos. And that is something that I'm definitely going to be doing actually for a while there. Um, my email wasn't even showing me some. I just got some of the emails uh, from some of you like um, uh, around the clock actually submitted a video asking if I can go back to the set where I had the TV. Um, now, I won't be going back to that set per se, um, but I might actually be merging this set with that old one uh, in the near future. I am always tinkering with this. I am trying to come up with new ways. I even have one addition to the set. I'm going to show you guys right here. I just haven't had time to put it up yet. But this will be something that will be in the set soon. So just letting you guys know about that. So uh, I just need to find a spot where I can actually put it. It will probably be hanging on the wall right there. But the TV and things like that will be coming back. Uh, there's just no telling as to when. But I will be updating you guys as soon as I know exactly um, when any of that stuff's happening. I just underwent some soundproofing uh, in the studio so that I can record more episodes. I've just been very under the weather the last couple of days. haven't been able to get back up on them. Um, and also with things like Daredevil and a couple of other shows that have come out, the movie news has really been kind of slow. So um, I'm using this today to just to get caught up on uh, on some of these other stories. And then I got to head out to go to, the, to Toronto to get to my Batman v Superman screening. But... Uh, yeah, I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of an update with that kind of stuff. So thank you for your questions. Keep submitting them. I am reading them. Uh, I'm getting every single comment that comes through, and I will be doing an episode hopefully within the next week or two, uh, or maybe even a few of them, where I'm just going to go over user questions. So keep sending them in. I will be getting to them. I do read them. They don't go unnoticed. So please keep sending them in. But on to the last story of the day. So last week, again, with Trailer Day, um, there were a lot of trailers that came out. One specifically that came out was the topic of a lot of controversy. And that trailer was Ben-Hur. Now, Ben-Hur, I talked about this property a long time ago when it was first announced. I've always been skeptical of Timur Bekmembetov's uh, directing style. Only because it is... He's kind of like a Michael Bay. Um, where it's more visual over substance. But Timur's movies have always had a flair to them. They've always had a, a very... It's, it's like watching um, uh, Tarzan's movies. Like, you know, Tarzan saying he did uh, Immortals, he did The Cell. You know, his, they're visually striking movies. But sometimes they lack substance. Timur's movies are a little bit more hit than miss in that regard. Um, with the exception of his last movie, uh, Selfless, which I did not like. But looking at what Ben-Hur can be. Ben-Hur can be an incredibly visceral movie. It doesn't look like we're getting it. My complaint with the movie is, first off, it doesn't look like Timur directed it. It looks like a generic sword and sandals movie. Um, it doesn't even look like it's that big of a movie, which is really surprising because you'd think that with a story like Ben-Hur, that they would put more money behind this movie. Now, maybe they're just holding back. The movie doesn't come out until August. Maybe we are going to see some bigger set pieces. The opening of the trailer looked really cool, but it needs some fine-tuning. Um, I really like that shot where you see the guy on the front of the ship, you know, the, the slave attached to it and smashing into that other building. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, you know, the POV shot of him flying through the air with the chain and the battle sequence going on there. It needs a little bit of touch-up, but that, to me, looks really cool. The problem that I have with it is it, it looks like they are not separating this movie enough from Gladiator. Because Gladiator was kind of like an unofficial remake of Ben-Hur when it came out in 2000. I mean, uh, different movies, but similar. And this looks like, at least the way that they're marketing it, it looks like Gladiator. They're not trying to separate that fact at all. They're trying to... I'm surprised they just didn't call this one Gladiator. Um, that and the haircuts, I... I, I a little bit more uneven of a haircut I would have liked. But it's almost nitpicky. And I don't know. I mean, you know, look, going back to the haircut part for a second. You look at Charlton Heston in the original. And while he didn't have the little flip up part, just a little bit of flip up, his hair was almost the same. And I don't think there were people complaining about that. 
so it's just I uh, I don't know it's just Hollywood idiocracy again I guess I don't know this I'm not gonna get into a rant don't worry um but everything just looked too clean and polished um it looked too much like a set it it didn't look enough like an old timey Hollywood movie but at the same time it kind of looked like an old timey Hollywood movie um it just I was let down by it. I was really hoping that, that we could get a very visceral Ben-Hur movie. And so far, I'm not being sold on that. I still have high hopes for it, mainly because John Ridley wrote the movie. John Ridley's the guy who won the Academy Award for writing 12 Years a Slave. Now, that can go one way or another. Akiva Goldsman won the Academy Award for writing A Beautiful Mind. Three or four years earlier, he also wrote Batman and Robin. So, the, it could go either way, but I, I don't know. I have, there, there are enough ingredients in this movie with taking the trailer out of the equation. There are enough ingredients going into this movie that give me hope. The trailer takes a little bit of that hope away um, and it makes me a little nervous. So, I don't know. The chariot race to me looks really cool. That ending shot, you know, where he's, he's being dragged along the ground. He looks up and there's the horses right there. That was kind of cool. I think there's going to be a lot of CGI that still needs to be finished. Um, I think we're going to get that as the summer goes on. Probably, well, this is it's MGM. And who is the other company? can't remember the other company involved. But we're probably going to get another trailer for this movie sometime at the end of May, beginning of June. Uh, maybe actually towards the middle of June. So, as long as it's not Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, then I'm okay with this. Um, I just wish that they tried to separate it a little bit more from Gladiator. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Are you more, are you on board with this? Do you think it kind of looks like garbage? Are you could go either way on the trailer or do you just not really care? Um, Ben Hur, Ben Hur could have been the type of story to reinvigorate sword and sandals movies. It could have been, it doesn't look like it's going to be which is unfortunate. Um, it, it has that resonance. I mean, it's it's one of the most classic movies in Hollywood. It really is. And I don't know. I, I feel like they kind of dropped the ball a little bit. But we're still five, four months out, five months out. We're still a way, uh, ways out. We've got lots of time. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And if we do get more information about this topic, then I will definitely update you guys on here. Well, that'll about do it for us here on Coming Soon Movie News with Nicholson. Thank you so much for watching. You guys have been a great audience. Go ahead and click that subscribe button there in the bottom corner. You get updates whenever a new video is posted. You can also follow me on Twitter or Facebook at Nicholson, N-I-K-L-S-U-N, for all of your movie updates. And also like our Facebook fan page at facebook.com slash movie news with Nicholson. If you ever have a topic or question like I've talked about on the show, go ahead and email me at movie news with Nicholson at gmail.com or put a comment in the comment section. But until until next time, you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.